I am grateful to be able to testify of God's mercy in my life. And for those of you who have heard my testimony before, you should know that freedom that last was really used by God in, in equipping me and really grounding me in the faith. And he continues to use this ministry to build me up and to conform me more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And so you'll, you'll hear more about how freedom that last plays a part in my life. I'm very grateful for how God is using it in many men's lives. And some of you listening, watching, you can testify of that as well. Uh, the church gathers uh, regularly, at least our building uh, is located here in Beverly. So the neighborhood of Beverly, that's where I spent most of my years growing up. And my years growing up were uh, very uh, foreign to the Lord. I did not grow up in a Christian home. I grew up in a home that had a, a nominal, nominal rather, a name only Roman Catholic father. And uh, my mom, she was Anglican, at least she, she said that, but really there was no religious teaching, no spiritual instruction that came in my home. I'm grateful to my parents. I, I really don't want to take it for granted that uh, they are both hardworking in, in an in a earthly sense. They, they love and they love myself and my siblings and, and my children, their grandchildren. I see that and I, I glorify God for that. I know that not everyone can testify of that. Uh, many men who come to freedom that last, many women who've come to freedom that last can't testify of that. So I count that a mercy from God. But it did me no eternal salvific good. It didn't help my heart change. As much as they tried, they did not have the wisdom that comes from above. And so, growing up, I was really left at the whim of popular culture and my own sinful passions to really mold me to be the man I'd become. Um, I remember as a child, I was the class clown. And some of that is very just juvenile, very childish, just mischievous, you might call it. But those seeds that were being planted, they would germinate they would be watered they'd be cultivated into something far worse in my young adulthood i was that boy in school who wanted to light fires who wanted to break things who wanted to kiss the girls who was interested in trying a beer behind the school building trying a smoke cigarette i uh, was really fascinated with that and i liked to push the boundaries i liked the attention i got when I would shock people and ooh people with things, awe people with things. And that fed this pride in my heart. I was a very proud child. And as we all should know, that doesn't just go away, it just matures and it can develop into more refined, mature sin. So you fast forward and by the time I was 16, uh, it wasn't just a beer I was sipping behind a school. These were flats of beer I was buying every weekend and binge drinking for the weekend. I was regularly smoking marijuana. I was regularly uh, doing harder drugs now. It started with um, trying out many psychedelics in junior high, mushrooms and, and, and uh, what, I, what I thought was LSD. Um, but it just started to go worse and worse. Uh, into cocaine ketamine, club drugs, MDMA, it was all for my pleasure. And I really elevated those things to what I thought was a respectable level. I really prided myself on being a, a druggie. That was the culture I was immersed in. I enjoyed my thrash metal. I enjoyed other kinds of music that uh, was very sensual, even demonic. And in this whole time, I thought Christians were the biggest fools on this earth. I thought I was very wise. I had everything figured out. Organized religion, especially Christianity, were for weak people. It was for somebody who was scared and somebody who just wanted to be led around. And I thought I had everything figured out. And there I was living my decadent life. Uh, women coming and going, the fruits of that, 
sexual immorality starting to really show. I started really questioning what I was living for. As uh, anybody who's delved into any kind of life-dominating sin, any kind of substance that's addictive, or any kind of uh, pleasure that is, is immoral, you find out that uh, the pleasure doesn't last. You need more of it. You, you keep going back to it wondering, why am I even doing this now? And so I started to get to that point, and uh, God had uh, used a good friend of mine, fellow drug user. He started to talk about some, some dark stuff, some conspiracy theories. And I won't divulge too much about that now, that might detract away from the testimony. Much can be said about uh, what's true or what's not in some of those conspiracy theories. But at the time, I thought he was crazy. I had to investigate some things myself, and so I kind of went down a rabbit hole, so to speak. I started looking into some of these claims he was making. And I did start to see that the powers that be, the government officials of the world, well, they had some darker things going on than I had first realized. Uh, not merely just corruption. I'm learning that it was spiritual uh, darkness, uh, secret societies, and similar things. This interested me. And yet Christianity was still so far from my mind. I started researching these things. Between the age of 16 to about 20, I investigated many different forms of spirituality, a lot of it in the New Age at first, uh, thinking, you know, if, if these higher-powered people, if, if they're taking spiritual things seriously, well, I got to at least investigate it a bit further. And so I, I was into some New Age mumbo-jumbo, kept learning through that, and realizing there was some, some holes in that. And I was brought to Islam, actually. I never became a Muslim. There's a specific way you have to become a Muslim and be obedient as a Muslim. I was doing drugs. I was seeing girls. I knew I couldn't become a Muslim, yet I still loved my sin in the midst of this, my, my pleasure. Uh, but I was very interested in learning the theology, the facts, the end times views of, of these groups. And I realized as I was studying and as I was starting to interact with Christians online, debating them and whatnot, the Bible actually has some important things to say about this whole topic I was studying, about a one world government, about a, a desire for powerful people to, to worship dark things. And, and as I learned about these dark things and then I started learning about the message of Christianity, I realized these are diametrically opposed. I started looking in the book of Revelation about the prophecies being made there. And so through many other things in the Bible, the other prophecies, the uniqueness of the message, I realized this is not a human book as I once thought it was. And I put my mental assent, I put my intellectual agreement into that book, into the 66 books of the Bible. But my heart, my heart was still far from God. I was about 19 years old. I started reading the Bible. I'd bring it to parties where I'd smoke dope and drink. And that was kind of the edgy person I could be there. Uh, and yet, as I kept reading the Bible, I was realizing, wow, this life I'm living, the Bible speaks to that too. It doesn't just speak to end time stuff. And I started getting convicted over my sin. I looked at this man, Jesus Christ, his words and his ways and I realized I fall so short. I started trying to be more like him. I utterly failed. And I came to realize I was not as free as I thought I was. When I tried to step away from the drugs, I realized they had a bigger hold on me than I had thought. When I tried to step away from women and pornography and lying and all these other sins that just were so interwoven with my life, I realized that this was me. And I was an object of God's wrath. And if I stayed in this state, I would be plunged into hell forever. And so I cried out to the Lord for mercy. I, I understood from the Bible, the gospel, that I must call upon Christ to be saved. I, I was learning both from the Bible and my own efforts. I could not earn heaven by my works. I could not make myself right with God by my own effort. And so I cast myself on Christ, on his work on the cross, his death for me, his resurrection for me. 
And I trusted in his promises that all who call upon him shall be saved. And I did not glow. I did not get up and stop using my drugs and get up and stop drinking and stop even fornicating. But there was a heart change somewhere in all that calling out. And I was never the same. I look back to that about 2012 and I realize I'm not sure when exactly God came into my heart. The Holy Spirit came and justified me, sanctified me. I was born again. I don't know exactly when that was, but there was a new direction. And so somewhere in there, he did save me. And yet I struggled. I had no Christian friends. I had no church. I was just reading some things, reading uh, things online, on YouTube, watching things, a lot of bad things. No discipleship. And yet God was very kind to me. As I kept straying, he would chasten me. He chastened me to the point when I heard about this ministry, Freedom That Lasts. I was actually out on my parents' porch having a smoke. And a uh, uh, sister in the Lord, she came with an invitation. There's a whole backstory with that. That'd be for another time. She did not want to go out that day, though. She was by nature quite timid. And yet she was so constrained. You know, I later talked with her about this. She was so constrained to go out. And that is where I received a tract, an invitation to this ministry, and I learned about it. And eventually God brought me here in such a broken state, realizing I needed to leave everything behind that I've known, my friends, uh, what, what I was holding on to for my sins. I needed a new family. I needed discipleship. Uh, the senior pastor of Lighthouse, you just heard from him, Pastor David Pruden. Uh, he, he took me in, in, in so many ways I could say that. Uh, we started meeting every week for accountability. Uh, we'd go for lunch together. The preaching from the church here, I started going to the Sunday services after I learned more about the ministry itself, the larger ministry of Lighthouse Baptist Church. Uh, the preaching from Pastor Bud Talbert, our, our teaching elder, uh, it really spoke to my heart. It was exactly what I needed. The Word of God opened up. And... By all of these means, God built me up more and more into maturity. And uh, it's been years now, uh, seven years since I've touched a joint, since I've done a rail, since I've um, uh, committed any sexual immorality. Uh, God's freed me from pornography addiction, many other things I could go on about. And knowing where I came from, I've wanted to give back. I'm just a forgiven sinner, a wretch saved by God's grace. And I want to see him help others as he's helped me. I want to be an instrument in his hands. Eventually, the Lord, uh, as he called me into ministry, he brought me into the eldership here. And now I get to have the privilege of serving as a, as a chapter director here. Um, and so I'm very grateful to all the Lord's done for me. I know that there is freedom that lasts. For anyone who looks to Jesus Christ and trusts in his person, who he is, and his work on the cross. And I trust that if you are listening right now and you do not know him, even tonight, if you call upon him with a humble heart, ready to lay down your body for him and him alone, then he will by no means cast you away. He promises all who come to him. He will by no means cast out. And so I urge you, be reconciled with God. Receive his mercy even as I and my brother Scott have. I have had the privilege of spending a number of years uh, with my brother Scott here at FTL, seeing him be changed. And now it's time to him to, for him to give glory to God for that. So, brother, come on up.